Pierre Bourdieu was born in the year 1930 in a rural area of southern France. He grew up in a modest household, but eventually moved to Paris, where he attended the prestigious secondary school, the Lycée Louis Le Grand, and then the even more exclusive and prestigious university, the Normale Supérieure. His life changed when he witnessed the Algerian War, which lasted from 1955 to 1958. Algeria was fighting fiercely for their independence from France. Atrocities were committed on both sides. Hundreds of thousands of people died. During this time, Bourdieu provided a unique view into the conflict by undertaking an ethnographic study of the Kabyle people. Once published, his ethnography was a huge success, and it became the start of his career in sociology and anthropology. In IB Social and Cultural Anthropology, one of the main theories from Bourdieu that you will need to know is about his theory of capital. So what is capital? Capital is the currency that buys you a higher position in society. It is the foundation of social life, and it is what decides your role in the social world. Capital is the result of labor, and over time, the amount of capital you, you can accumulate increases. However, not all labor, for example, forms of capital, are equal. The more time you spend accumulating a form of capital, the more valuable the capital is. So there are two main types of capital, social and cultural capital. Cultural capital can be described as what you have and what you know. Bourdieu divided cultural capital further into three subtypes, embodied, objectified, and institutionalized cultural capital. So first of all, we're going to look at embodied cultural capital, which is the qualities of your mind or body. These include things like the skills that you have, your accent, dialect, posture, and mannerisms. It also includes your tastes, such as your taste in music, art, and literature. Embodied culture, cultural capital is important because more powerful social classes tend to differentiate themselves from others by how they look and behave. Therefore, you essentially need to buy membership into these classes with embodied social capital. In the UK, for example, people with received pronunciation, in other words, a posh accent, traditionally have higher social prestige because that accent is associated with power, money, and influence. Meanwhile, in Young and Defiant in Tehran, we saw that young men and men in general are encouraged to express a very significant kind of emotion, sadness, especially crying, since suffering was valued, um, is valued in their culture. Since crying and sadness represents and is a symbol of maturity and wisdom. Next, we're going to look at objectified capital. Objectified capital are your material belongings that have cultural significance. For example, a very luxurious car, such as the Rolls Royce, usually gives you a lot of objectified capital in society. However, this varies in all societies. In Young and Defiant in Tehran, we saw that the Pisigi, the youth moral police in Tehran, made sure to present themselves as poor. Even if they came from rich families, they, wore, they wear ragged clothes, eat simple food, and drive cheap cars. This gave them higher social prestige because poverty is associated with the revolutionaries who were considered heroes and are considered heroes to this day. Now, finally, institutionalized cultural capital are symbols of cultural competence and authority. So this refers to things like credentials and qualifications. Even, even seemingly small things, such as the title doctor, can give you a large amount of institutionalized cultural capital. 
University degrees are a powerful form of institutionalized ca cultural capital. Going to university gives you things like skills, which is a type of embodied cultural capital. But this isn't the only benefit to going to university. A university degree in itself does add to your capital, no matter what, where you went and how you got your degree. However, the more prestigious of a university you went to, or go to in the future, the more institutionalized ca cultural capital you received or you will receive. It's important to note that when someone shares cultural capital with others, they tend to have a feeling of collective identity. This happens amongst groups such as the alumni of German Swiss, who have the same educational qualification, or even amongst the Basiji in Tehran, who share the same values, beliefs, the same way of dress and behavior. This leads us on to social capital. If cultural capital is what you know and what you have, then social capital is who you know. Your amount of social capital depends on your social network. You gain social capital in two different ways. One, by being connected to a lot of people or by having connections with a few people who have a lot of capital. In other words, being connected to a smaller amount of people who have more power. Basically, your social relationships give you social capital. There are two ways that this occurs. First of all, through the relationships that you make in your own life. These are enacted, maintained, and reinforced through exchanges, such as gift exchanges over the holidays or during birthdays. This, there is a second way for you to build social capital, and that is through relationships you inherit. This happens when you are born into a family or when you graduate from the same university as someone else. So why is social capital important? Well, social capital is important because of several aspects. Number one, groups share their capital so that it becomes part of their collective capital. By joining a group, you gain access to that co collective capital. This means you have more overall capital and therefore are more powerful in general. When you have more social capital, people want to know you more because if they had you in their social network, then their own social capital would increase. Because of their willingness to have a connection with you, they want to form a connection between you and them easy. This means they need to lower their standards. So you don't need to spend as much effort into creating and maintaining that social connection with them. This makes it even easier for you yourself to grow and maintain your social network and social capital. Alternatively, if you have very little social capital, it could be more difficult for you to start and maintain and build on social capital and social connections. So, what did we tell you guys about today? We told you a short biography about Pierre Bourdieu and introduced you to his theory of capital, whereby capital is the currency that buys you a higher position in society. And hopefully remember that there are two different types of capital, social and cultural, wherein ca cultural is separated into three parts, embodied, objectified and institutionalized. Where embodied is about the mind and the body, objectified is material belongings and institutionalized are symbols of cultural competence and authority. Whereas on the other hand, social capital is mainly about the connections that you have and who you know and how powerful these people are. However, these aren't the only species and types of capital that Bourdieu came up with. These are two, there are two more, symbolic and economic. However, we won't go too much into those. There are also very important theories, such as his theory on habitus and fields. If you're interested in his work, you should check those out as well. Thanks for listening.